Welcome to this video that will guide you through the application of your product. When you want to strengthen or extend your natural nails, it's crucial for durability that the nail shape is built correctly. You can imagine the nail as a bridge. For a bridge to bear the weight it needs to carry, it must have strong points to withstand. Same applies to the nail, otherwise it will break a bit or the product will come off the nail quickly. To get a full rundown of the theory behind nail construction, it's a good idea to read the section in the theory book about construction. To summarize, there are three important rules of thumb. Firstly, the nail must be shaped with a smooth curve from cuticle to tip, and the highest point on this curve is known as the apex, which is the nail's strength point. It is crucial to ensure the nail has a smooth curve for optimal strength. Apex guarantees its ability to handle and withstand everyday bumps, hits and strains without breaking or sustaining any damage. So it's important that you focus on making a nice arch with the apex, which ensures that your nail has strength. Secondly, it's important to focus on filing the undersides of the nail, those lower arches, to file them evenly so they can support the nail and withstand impact. Undersides of nail must not be curved, must not have a bend, must not point upwards or downwards. You should preferably file horizontally along the natural nail to give the best balance to the nail. Thirdly, it's important to evenly place the product over the entire nail. There shouldn't be a collection of products on one side, but not on the right side. And there shouldn't be a bunch of product on the tip of the nail, but not so much on the actual nail bed. As a rule of thumb, there should be a minimum of one mm of product over the entire nail to ensure a balanced buildup. And of course, there should be a little more there where the apex is and forms the bulge. So please be extra careful to make sure there is enough on the sides of the nail, because that's usually where you end up making the nail too thin. That makes the nail most likely to break where the natural nail separates from the skin and becomes the free edge. And of course, we want to avoid that. Generally, it's crucial for a good and lasting result that you're careful to follow our instructions and make an effort to perform all steps correctly. If unsure or need guidance, don't hesitate to contact us for help along the way. We're here to assist you. Make the most of your time and have an incredible experience with excitement, joy and unforgettable memories that will leave you with a sense of all this and happiness. If you want to see a complete walkthrough of how to make a perfect prep, Go check out our video guide or look it up on page 44 in your theory book, where there's a detailed step-by-step -step guide. When you work with Builder Gel, it's important to clean your brush. You do that by taking some Builder Gel on the brush, and then on the lid of your Builder Gel, you massage the Builder Gel into the bristles of the brush to make sure that all the bristles are covered. When working with Builder Gel, it is crucially important to thoroughly clean your brush to maintain its optimal performance and extend its lifespan. Once you have prepared your brush, you will need to apply the stencils. It is extremely important that the templates are applied correctly in order to provide the nails with the most optimal conditions for a proper build-up. The process involves taking a template and positioning it underneath the nail to achieve the desired outcome. When you close the template around your fingers, it is crucial that the ends meet precisely and in a perfectly aligned manner. That makes it easier for the template to sit right on the nail. When you feel like the template is in the right place, you need to identify how wide the nail is on the template using the template's guidelines. So you're essentially searching for the point where your natural nail ends, and then you can delicately remove the template and simply trim a small section right at that point where you previously observed the nail's end. Once you've cut the templates on both sides, all you really need to do is put them back on your fingers and secure them really well. It is of utmost importance that there is absolutely no space between the curve of the nail and the template positioned underneath the nail. If there is a gap between the template and the nail, there will be some jelly stuff in that gap that will be annoying as soon as you take off the template. When you apply the base coat, it's important that you do it in a pretty thin layer. So when you grab your brush, go ahead and scrape off the excess on both sides and take a small bead or drop of product. After that, carefully position your brush in the middle of the nail plate, right up around the cuticle area, and apply a slight amount of pressure to ensure that the bristles spread out and form a gorgeous fan shape. 
Then you apply the base coat in an upward motion towards the cuticle area, going as high as possible without, of course, making contact with the skin. Continue all the way down the nail plate, meaning coat the base coat well to ensure that all the unevenness in the nail is completely covered and that the base coat is applied evenly. When you apply base coat or any other nail product, it's important that you always seal the free edge between each layer. To seal the free edge, utilize your brush to gently glide it out on the tip of the nail, ensuring proper sealing for a secure finish. If you possess an extremely short nail or encounter difficulty in sealing the free edge, you can employ a nail art brush to effectively seal the edge without any hassle. Once you're satisfied with product application, all nails must cure for 60 seconds under UV lamp. If you possess our home lamp, then please be cautious and mindful that all the nails must remain inside the metal plate. Once you've cured your product for 60 seconds under the UV lamp, there will be a pretty thin, sticky layer on top of the nail. It's totally normal, it must not be removed. It's called a plug-in doctor's and it's there so that the next layer can adhere even better. Now you have to commence the process of constructing the extension of the nail. You can achieve this by picking up a diminutive bead of builder gel on your brush, ensuring to apply it carefully and precisely. So you position this small gemstone on the area where the template and the free edge of the nail come together in a seamless transition. You construct the extension by transferring your builder gel onto the template so it takes shape as this new nail extension. It is crucial to ensure that your extension is in good contact with the natural nail and not solely resting on the tip, as this is important for proper adhesion and overall nail health. Make sure to have at least a couple of millimetres of product so that the extension doesn't risk breaking when you have cured it and remove the mould lock. To make sure that the extension you just made doesn't slip away or run off, you can use the quick flash drive programme for 10 seconds. This programme does a surface hardening which encapsulates the jelly and makes sure it stays where it should. Kindly remember to utilise this flash drive function in between each individual finger and extension that you create and perform. When you have done all five extensions and cured each one in the flash cure function, you should finally cure all five nails for 60 seconds. Once the nail has hardened, you can carefully remove all the templates. You do that by gently squeezing the sides of the template and pulling a tiny bit and slowly until the template releases itself and easily slips off the nail and off this newly built extension. If you've nailed your new extension perfectly from the get-go, you can now just skip right to step number six. If you believe that your shape is not quite perfect in comparison to the desired final shape, it is a good suggestion to fill it in before proceeding to the next step in the process. The process involves wiping off the initial sticky layer or tacky residue using a cleaner solution to ensure a clean surface. Then you can fill out the form with, for example, 180 side of a 180 grit nail file. Afterward, the complete nail should be gently buffed using the 180 side of a 180 grit buffer in a gentle manner, ensuring a smooth and polished surface. And finally, you need to wipe again with cleaner to remove this superficial dust. Once you have filed the shape so that your new extension matches your desired end shape, you can simply move on to the next step, number six. If you filed the new extension in step five, the nail in this step will be a little bit rough and dry. To make the builder gel flow more easily during the construction, you can start by brushing a very thin layer of builder gel over the entire nail. So it will basically function as a slip agent and thus help your builder gel to flow into the areas where slip agents have been applied. The slip joint does not require hardening. After removing the cuticle, it is time to shape the nail and give it the desired form. You do that by applying a small amount of product on your brush and placing it in the center of the nail, specifically around the cuticle area. You have to imagine like you are going to press this bead against the cuticle without of course hitting the skin or causing any harm or injury. 
Afterwards, you can pull away the excess product growth from the cuticle area and spread it around the rest of the nail in a slow and smooth motion towards the tip of the nail and also onto the extension you just made. It's important that you make sure that the structure of the nail has the correct shape and the correct points of strength. You can do that, for example, by turning your fingers upside down so the product can pull towards the center and this apex, this beautiful arch, which also represents the strength point of the nail. If you do not think the apex stands out on its own, you could potentially make use of a nail art brush or simply employ this oval brush to pull down towards the center and in doing so, create this unique and eye-catching apex coil design. Remember, you can always read much more about the proper structure and key points from page 11 in our theory book. If you get builder gel on your skin, it's crucial to remove it promptly to prevent any potential harm. You remove it best by, for example, to take a microfiber cloth and dip it into your cleaner and lightly wipe it off with a lint-free cloth. Then you make sure to gently and sharply remove the built-up gel that has come off to the side and on the skin. To make sure that the shape you've just built doesn't slide down into the cuticle or lose its form, you can use our Quick Fix program. You simply put your hand into the UV lamp and press the button that says 10 seconds flash run. After you have applied the product and are content with the results, it is imperative to allow all nails to cure for 60 seconds in the UV lamp. This curing process is crucial for achieving optimal performance and ensuring the best possible outcome for your nails. Once your nails have fully cured, you need to remove that sticky layer, meaning poke at it, and you do that by taking a lint-free wipe saturating it with cleaner and then just wiping the nails off right now. Next thing you gotta do is to shape the form in order to perfect your structure. It is not always that you achieve the perfect shape right away, so it is nice to have the option to file your nails afterwards. When you shape the nail, you can either do it with a manual 100, 180 grit file or an electric nail file. When you use an electric nail file, you can, for example, use a sanding roller with grid 180 or any other optional bit. A helpful tip when shaping your nail is to avoid filing directly on the apex, which means not filing in the middle of the nail on top of that curve. Certainly that's because the top of the arch should be positioned where there is the most product. So file towards the center instead of towards the edges of the nail, on both the one hand and the other hand. And then make an effort to angle your file in such a way that you achieve a nice and smooth transition to the natural nail located down by the cuticle area. And then angle it towards the tip of the nail, ensuring you create a nice point at the end while avoiding a thick nail tip that can detract from the manicure's overall appearance. Another good tip when filing your nail is to file the underside of the nail to ensure proper shaping. When working with templates, it's possible to encounter a small gap between the natural nail and the template, even if you've been meticulous. This can occur despite your best efforts to ensure a seamless fit. Sometimes that means that this jelly slides in between this gap and can settle as a little hardened jelly lump underneath the nail. It's nice to get rid of, and for that you can, if you have an electric nail file, use an under the nail bit to gently run it on the underside of the nail. When you feel like you've reached the ideal structure, buff the nail with a 100, 180 grit buffer. Then you filed the nail into the perfect shape. All you really need to do is remove the dust by taking a lint-free wipe, saturated with cleaner, and then thoroughly wipe the nail. If you don't want to finish with a gel polish color on top of your builder gel, you can actually just skip to step number 12. We're about to apply the first coat of gel polish color now. The color pigments in gel polish can settle at the bottom over time, so it's important that you mix the color before use. The most optimal method to mix your gel polish color is by flipping the bottom of the bottle upside down, placing it between two flat hands, and then rolling the bottle back and forth. That way you can avoid getting air bubbles in your gel polish. 
When you have mixed your colour, you should dip the brush into the bottle and wipe off most of the gel polish on the inside of the bottle neck to prevent air bubbles. Next, position your brush in the centre of the nail plate, directly near the cuticle, and gently apply pressure to allow the bristles to fan out, creating a beautiful effect. Then you make sure to brush the bristles down towards the cuticle as far as you possibly can, without, of course, touching the skin. Once you've gotten the colour up towards the cuticle, with a clean edge without touching the skin, you then drag the brush down along the nail to paint the rest of the nail plate. If you're having trouble creating a really sharp colour edge right up against the cuticle, you can advantageously use a thin nail art brush to sharpen the colour a little bit further up. Again, it's important to remember that you always need to seal the free edge. Your gel polish doesn't need to be fully opaque in the first coat. You see, it needs to be spread so thin that it doesn't cover completely. When utilising a full coverage gel polish, as opposed to a transparent one, applying a second coat will result in an opaque finish. Otherwise, you can always add a third layer or a fourth layer. Once you're happy with the application of your product, all nails need to cure for 60 seconds in the UV lamp. If you possess our home lamp, then please be cautious and mindful that all the nails must remain inside the metal plate. Once you've cured the first layer of paint, there will again be this quite thin, sticky layer called a tack coat. It still can't be removed because it has the effect that the next layer will adhere better. Apply the second layer of gel polish colour in the exact same way as we just did with the first layer. Now it's time to apply the top coat, which is the very last layer before nail oil. Top coat is applied in the exact same way as we just did with both layers of gel polish. So it's basically just about making sure that the top coat hits all the places where there is colour, you know. It's also important that you still remember to seal the free edge. Once you've made sure that there's top coat over the entire colour, you just need to cure them in the UV lamp for 60 seconds. Our top coat is a top coat that does not require wiping, which means it does not have that sticky layer, you know, that sticks to things when it is done curing. You finish your nail treatment by going out and washing your hands, and then apply a little nail oil. Nail oil is super important for a good durability because any nail will break or split if it's way too dry. Imagine that the nail is kind of like a branch. If you try to bend a branch and it's completely dry, it'll actually just snap pretty easily. If the branch is instead well moistened, it will simply bend rather than break when you try to snap it, as opposed to breaking completely. The same goes for nails, so it's always important to be efficient in using nail oil. You're done with your nails now and you did an awesome job. Remember, if you experience any challenges or have any questions along the way, you're always more than welcome to reach out to us so we can provide the best advice and guidance possible.